Good afternoon guys and welcome back to another video. It's a bit of a weird one today. I'm not going to be doing a camp in this video, although I am doing a camp tonight at Ellesmere Lake, hence the setup behind me. But I wanted to answer a few questions that you guys have asked me over the last few weeks since I started doing some car camping about what kind of gear I take and asked me questions on Instagram. So I thought I'd make this dedicated video of my top 10 car camping essentials list. So first and foremost, number one, a carbon monoxide alarm. If you're planning on cooking in the back of your car, you absolutely need one of these. Open the windows, open the doors as much as you can without giving your stealth location away. And also have one of these present if you've got an open flame. The thing about cooking in an enclosed space is that when you haven't got enough ventilation, carbon monoxide builds up. I've had this go off a couple of times and I've had to just open the window a little bit more, but this has been an absolute lifesaver because you don't know how much carbon monoxide's in the air until it's too late. Number two is a fire extinguisher and as an optional extra, a fire blanket. Now the reason why I have both is always have a fire extinguisher present if you're gonna be cooking in the back of the car. I'm going back to the first reason again, but honestly, having an open flame in a vehicle that's not designed to be cooked in is not exactly the safest of methods. So the safer you can make it, the better. So fire extinguisher first, second, is a fire blanket. Now I use a fire blanket to put underneath my cooker while I'm cooking to give that extra barrier protection to soft furnishings because my bed would go up in a flash. Rolling on to number three, something that I've recently acquired is a jump starter. Now the reason why I've been interested in getting one of these for some time is because for those long-standing viewers, you'll know that I've had some issues in the past with my dashboard saying that the battery's low. I actually got sent this product from a company called Top Don I'll just show you guys there. It's a jump starter. Just gives me a bit of peace of mind to make sure that no matter where I am on some remote destination somewhere that's gonna make it quite difficult for me to be recovered, I can at least attempt to jump start my car. Something super simple, but super effective, a hot water bottle. I can't stress enough that getting a cheap little water bottle like this, I think it costs me like seven pounds, it makes your car camping trip so much more comfortable. And rolling on to number five, an app that has saved a few of my car camping adventures, Park For Night. Now, if you haven't heard of it, I'd highly recommend you look it up and potentially download it off the Play Store if you can't find a place to park and you're struggling to get your head down for the night. So yeah, check out the app Park For Night. Now, rolling on to number six is get yourself a decent cook system. A gas stove that you can buy from any outdoor shop. The Ridge Monkey. Now, for those that are familiar with car camping and van life, you probably already know what this is but this has been an absolute game changer for me when it comes to cooking stuff in the back of the car. I haven't got to worry about all the washing up, the faff of everything that I used to take for my car camping adventures, the frying pans, worrying about oil, how I'm gonna clean this and swap that over on different frying pans. It's a two-sided frying pan that comes apart. You've got a little utensil kit here. You've got your two handles there. And on the other side, on the flip side, you've got a small set of kitchen utensils, so you haven't got to carry all the stuff from home that really is designed for the house and not for a confined space. Number seven, a power bank. Now I've had this tucked away in my cupboard for about two years before I even started doing any car camps. It's a 20,000 milliamp hour power bank and I use it for recharging batteries overnight, whether it be for camera gear, recharging the phone, and it just gives me another power source instead of having to run the engine and use a cigarette lighter. The way fuel prices are going up, I'll be spending 10 pounds to charge my phone. <laughs> so get yourself a portable power bank. I'll leave a link below. Right, now for the last two, I've got to take you inside the car because the last one, I don't really want to show you in public. It's going to be quite embarrassing. But join me in the car and I'll show you the last two on the list. And number nine, is make sure you have a comfortable bed system. This is probably the one thing I've spent the most time on in the back of the car here, changing it into a micro camper. I can't stress enough the importance of getting a good night's sleep when you're out in the car. So what I've used is a three inch thick memory foam single mattress that I was able to buy from Amazon. I'll leave a link below. And I've cut it to the shape and contours of the car. As far as a blanket's concerned, this is an old double sleeping bag from my wardrobe that I haven't used in many, many years. The reason why I've kept the double and I haven't gone for a single sleeping bag is because I don't actually use it as a sleeping bag, I use it as a quilt. Doubling it up and sleeping on top of that three inch thick memory foam mattress is extremely comfortable, let me tell you. Now I've got myself all confused here because I can't remember what number I'm on. I think I'm on number nine or 10. I've got two more things to show you anyway, so I'm gonna show you whether it ends up being 10 or 11, who cares? <laughs> so the next thing on the list before I get to the really embarrassing thing is make sure you've got some nice window covers. So these little pads in the back of the car here is something that I've created. It's nothing that requires a genius to make. It's basically insulating foil wrapped in some 
blackout cloth and stapled together to the contour of the window. I'll show you a little closer look where you can see how they're attached. It's just literally double-sided Velcro. I've super glued that onto the actual window pad itself and I've just stuck that onto the window. And coupled with the window pads are these wind deflectors from a company called Team Heiko or Hiko. They make loads of different wind deflectors for many different cars. They probably do some for your car. I brought a set of four so I can crack all four windows to get some airflow in the night to try and reduce the condensation in the back of the car. You should really do that if you're gonna be doing some car camping. Not only does it help with cooking, if you're gonna be cooking in the back of the car, but it also helps with condensation while you're sleeping as well, especially on a cold night. So I brought these, they're quite easy to fit. I think I just put some clips up into the window kind of frame here and they stuck quite well. The most embarrassing part of car camping that I haven't even shown anyone yet on this channel. I don't know whether I should, but I'm going to anyway. It'll probably make the thumbnail. Make sure you click and give it a like, all right? There's not many people that show this side of car camping or van life. <laughs> right, so if you're out in a remote location, should we say, and you're not near a supermarket or a 24 hour truck stop, how are you gonna to go to the toilet? Now for us blokes, it's quite easy to go for a number one, just find a bush or just a quiet area and let it rip. But what if you need a number two? That's a bit more difficult. Now I did think about different things I could possibly do, bringing a shovel, but that seems a bit uncivilized, doesn't it? Maybe more towards camping possibly. When you car camping, you're up in it a little bit, aren't you, with luxury? So this is what I've invested in. I haven't had a chance to use it yet and I hope I never do because I've always been able to either suck it back in <laughs> or find a supermarket or just time my number twos right. Go before I go camping and then go when I come back from a trip. But anyway, this is what I've got if all else fails. It's basically just a little port loo and a pee bowl. I use the pee bottle in the middle of the night if it's really, really cold outside and I don't want to get out of the car and I want to try and keep and maintain the heat inside. I'll use the pee bottle, empty it in the morning, easy enough. Um, not the most uh, civilized way of going to the toilet, I guess, but when you're uh, car camping, it calls for desperate measures. Now this, I think it cost me about 25 or 30 pounds. I don't worry, what you're looking in there at the moment is not feces. What it is, is sawdust. And it doesn't just have a practical purpose, it has a bit of a mental purpose as well, because knowing that I've got everything covered, no matter where I go, no matter what remote location I go to, on top of a mountain somewhere, I can go to the toilet in whatever capacity I need to, whenever I want to. My number one kind of piece of advice, if you're looking to get into it, would be do a bit of car camping on your driveway first. See if you like it. Try and make your bed as comfortable as possible on the back of the car. And don't underestimate the fact that it can get really, really cold at night. Right, I am gonna enjoy the rest of my camp. I'm heading off into Ellesmere now to get some fish and chips. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave it a like, leave a comment below, tell me what you thought of it, and I'll see you guys next time.